Why spend time studying the so-called Ten Commandments? There was a time, you may know, when such a study was part of the ministry of making disciples. Indeed, for most of the 19th and 20th centuries, one was not considered a functioning disciple unless and until they could recite, along with the names of the books of the Bible, the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, the whole of the law from memory. That may explain in part why the Western world, though as, as sinful as the world is today, experienced a greater measure of freedom and order, and why the Western world now, out of touch with the commandments, seems to be sliding into chaos and bondage. Yet we ask, why spend our time studying the Ten Commandments? Are they not, as the majority of our contemporaries argue, largely irrelevant or worse, potentially weapons of oppression? Why study the Ten Commandments? Well, ask another question. Why did the one who spoke the commandments speak them? What did he hope his speaking would accomplish? Step back for a moment and recall the historical context in which the living God spoke the Ten Words, as they are literally called in Exodus. Hundreds of thousands of people who 50 days before had been freed from slavery and oppression were making their way across the Sinai Desert on their way to the Promised Land, and they had made camp at the foot of Mount Sinai. On that particular day, the mountain slowly became engulfed by smoke, which was pouring from what appeared to be a fire on the top of the mountain. Lightning flashed in the thick clouds. Sounds of trumpets grew louder and louder, and the whole mountain began to shake. The people stood in rapt attention, for they knew that the living God, the mighty God, the holy God, had descended upon the mountain. The people trembled in awe, and they feared for their friend and leader, Moses. For while the lightning flashed and the trumpet blasted and the ground shook, Moses was on the mountain. The liberating God had called him up into that cloud of smoke. Finally, Moses came down from the mountain. He emerged from that awesome, terrifying presence unharmed. Indeed, he glowed. And he had a word from the God whose name is Yahweh. More exactly, he had 10 words from Yahweh. Still more exactly, Yahweh's 10 words had Moses. Throughout the Bible, the 10 commandments, the 10 words, are celebrated as a gift of God's grace. As Old Testament scholar Gerhard von Rath put it, God declaring the 10 commandments, speaking the 10 commandments, is celebrated as a saving act of the first order. So much so that Israel, by God's specific direction, gladly celebrated an annual week-long feast to celebrate the giving of the law. Israel celebrated three annual feasts, Passover, Tabernacles, and Pentecost. They were as big a deal centuries ago as Christmas, Easter, Mother's Day, Thanksgiving, or in our time. Passover celebrates the Exodus, God's liberation of Israel from 400 years of slavery in Egypt. Tabernacles celebrates the 40 years Israel spent wandering in the desert when God graciously provided water and food, when God graciously guided the people with a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, and when the people lived in tents and God graciously dwelt among them in a tent called the tabernacle, hence the name of the feast. Pentecost, the word simply means the 50th, referring to 50 days after the Passover, celebrates God's gift of the law. And the dominant note of that feast is joy. I mean, imagine that. People celebrating with joy because someone has interrupted their lives by speaking a new law. Why? Why would anyone want to celebrate the giving of the law? The surprising answer is this. The living and holy God speaks the Ten Commandments in order to protect and enhance the life of freedom. The living and holy God, who has a name, personal name, the name Yahweh, which is usually translated and obscured by the title Lord, and who wants to be called by that name, speaks the Ten Commandments in order to protect and enhance the life of freedom. God had rescued Hebrew slaves from and had rescued the Hebrew slaves for from bondage and oppression for relationship with Yahweh and with each other. That is how it always is with God. God frees us from to free us for. God freed from slavery of all of its kinds for relationship, for intimacy, for wholeness, and for trust. From the top of the mountain, ablaze with fire, shrouded in smoke, the living God 
holy God declares, I am Yahweh, your God, who brought you out of slavery. And then, from the top of the mountain, speaks 10 words in order to protect and enhance the new freedom. As we read the rest of the Bible, one of the surprising discoveries we make is how closely connected the giving of the law is with the promise of life. Again and again, we hear the claim that in speaking the law, Yahweh is speaking life. Deuteronomy, the second telling of the law, chapter 4, verse 1, God says, And now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and judgments which I'm teaching you to perform in order that you may live. Deuteronomy 5.29, God says, Oh, that they had such a heart in them, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it may be well with them and their children forever. Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 and 16, Moses says, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, keep His commandments, that you may live. Love Yahweh, keep His commandments, so you may live. Love, keep, live. Jesus also connects those verbs. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. We see this close connection between law and life in Psalm 19. The psalm is composed in two halves. The first half celebrates the goodness of God's creation. The second celebrates the goodness of God's law. Life through creation. The heavens are telling the glory of God. And then life through the law. The law of Yahweh is perfect, restoring the soul. The precepts of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of Yahweh are pure, enlightening the eyes. They are more desirable than gold. <laughs> yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. <laughs> really? God's commandments are more desirable than gold? They're sweeter than honey? Why? Israel celebrates the giving of the law of Yahweh because Yahweh gives the law in order to protect and enhance life, the life of freedom. And that is why we spend time studying the Ten Commandments, to be alive in the life for which our Creator has made us and our Redeemer has rescued us. Bless you as you study.